So, uh, this gives us an encounter, this gives us a mission, but I know what the mission is and I don't want to take it right now because it's insanely complicated, it seems. I've never been able to finish it, but it seems interesting. And we're gathering gossip. Who's plotting what out in the tomb colonies? And this option will give us, as we will find out when we press go, a port report on Vendabytes. And this is a commodity that we can sell in Fallen London to the Admiralty. And uh, basically we're getting paid for intel. So along the coasts of the Untazi, this is what this is how I pronounce that, the Untazi. It's remarkably hard to die. The decrepit and nearly dead who leave London become tomb colonists and settle here in bandaged peace, so they all pretty much look like mummies. But they don't give up their ties to home or their politics. You gather a whole of complex clues, enough to keep your contacts in London interested. There we go. We have done that well. And just because I'm curious, I'm gonna go for the Explore Vendabyte option, because that could turn out quite favorably for me. So, a raggedy fellow. Captain, I'm a good seaman. I'm yours if you'll have me. Will you have me? I'm hungry. I'll work hard. He seems likely enough, if a little ragged and sorrowful. So we need to decide whether we take him with us on board, or we leave him here. And mm, I'm actually thinking about... Uh, I'm taking him with me, I think. The more crew you have, so you have the officers, but you just have regular crew as well, which is displayed here. We have 8 out of 10, so we can still accommodate 2 more. And the more crew you have, the faster your ship will go. Because, so to speak, it'll run more efficiently the more crew you have, so uh, you'll go a bit faster. So I think I'm going to take him with me, because I also need to expend crew when, for instance, I um, take over board and take over a, uh, a pirate ship on the ocean. I could send it back to London with a skeleton crew, and um, if I'm lucky, it'll make it home, and I'll get paid for that as well. So there's a lot of ways to make the money, to make these echoes, to earn these. Right. You won't be sorry. I'll work double watches. Ask anyone. They'll tell you I have a good name. Yes, yes. Eventually, get him to stop talking. His enthusiasm is promising, if a little pitiable. And then it says, I, I like this, um, there may be further effects from this decision, which is always a bit ominous. How long am I into this game? Well, this game, um, this particular instance, I've just started. Like, I've started the stream half an hour ago, no, or 20 minutes ago, and then I started this game. But um, I've played Sunless Sea for 13 hours now, as uh, Steam tells me, which is pretty much more than 95% of my Steam library. Like, you don't spend 13 hours on a Call of Duty campaign. Not that I play much Call of Duty, but it's an example. Um, the only games I've spent more time on is probably Kerbal Space Program and Skyrim. So that accounts for something, that I'm intrigued by this game. I'm, I'm, and it's still expanding every week, like new, new, um, hello, new uh, content is being added pretty much every two weeks or so. Right. Hello Gamer Richie, what's up? A skilled crewman. This is the Zailer who came back to you for a berth. He's done good work, this one, but he's keeping a little shrine to the salt, the nameless god of the horizon at the back of the hold. Shall I permit it or forbid it? And both of these will have consequences, probably. Uh, permit it out here. A captain needs all the help he can get, even from strange, sad gods of farewells. Or forbid it, you'll have none of this nonsense aboard your ship. If the salt even exists, its attention is dangerous. Uh, uh, I'll permit it. Religious freedom. I'm all for choice. So, you let him keep his salt circle and his chalked arrow. That night, as you stand on the foredeck, a soft breeze comes out of the east. The salt's direction tussles your hair and passes. You have now... Oh, I now have salt's attention. Oh dear. That might that might go badly. Uh, anyway, I think that's all we need in Vendabyte. We've bought some supplies, back up to five. We've obtained some echoes and spent them well on the supply, and also got a port report. So we're gonna launch once again. Turn off our light again. 
Turning off the light, of course, means your terror increases more rapidly, aka this meter will fill up more rapidly, which is a problem, because, as I said before, when it maxes out, your crew will start a mutiny, which will most likely result in you dying. But if you turn it on, you'll spend fuel, or expend fuel, about twice as fast, which really, really sucks. Uh, and I don't really want to pay for a lot of fuel. So I'll take that on the chin. If you notice, by the way, there's this little skull here, and around the skull are little dots, and the little dots indicate how fast I'm gaining terror. If they're red, I'm gaining it really fast. Orange is moderately fast, and green is very, very slowly. I'm doing very well, Richie. I've, um, I'm branching out into streaming more than just StarCraft, because basically I never stream StarCraft because I'm too scared to play on ladder. But um, <laughs> I do like playing other games on stream. I do like some, some interaction, and I do like explaining some stuff. As far as I know, of course. It's, there's certain things that I've not figured out myself either. Uh, right, so what we need to do now is make our way to Gator's Morn here, because that is where we need to um, pick up the strategic information, uh, which was the quest that we got from the Admiralty's office in Fallen London. So we go here and then back to Fallen London. And by that time, usually what will happen is um, someone is going to meet us in Fallen London, some informant or some, uh, well, some thug, actually, more like. And he'll give us some stuff, which will come in handy. That should be uh, what's going to happen. Now, meanwhile, in the bottom left, you may have noticed that there is a lot of uh, there's some some colored texts uh, always appearing, and I do like that. Oh shit! I need to turn left here. Ooh. Let's not crash into the uh, into island. Home. Warmly lit windows. Company. Peace. Thoughts of home come at the strangest times. Aww. Right. So as you may also notice, at the top, there is our ship stats. We have two speeds forward and two speeds backwards. We have a hull strength and we have a hull capacity. So if we are lacking in crew, if we have less than half of the crew that the ship requires, uh, we cannot go into the second speed, the fastest speed, forwards and backwards. And, uh, of course, if we take damage, our hull will suffer damage, which we will be able to see here. Anyway. Gator's Morn. The Morn is a stalagmite, fast as a crag, and its foot has no safe harbors. Well, where the fuck do we just make port, then? Okay. So, there's a lot of text here. I'm not going to read all of it, but I'll just have you notice um, what it looks like in the lore. Pretty much a huge rock out in the sea, which uh, has a lot of, st well, struts on it, a lot of construction, some, uh, probably some caves carved into the side. And we can have an evening at the Arendt Limpet. A drinking den by the dock cradles is a good place for your crew to find companionship and let off steam. But although Gator's Morn is a free port, the Corsairs prefer their own and look askance at respectable Londoners. So, I have stats as well. So it says here a tough challenge, which means that if I hover over this little icon here, that says that my Veil's quality gives you a 38 chance, 38% 38 chance of success. And these stats is what is outlined here. I have my health, my hearts, which sometimes help with tests around Terra. I have Veils here, which is um, the range at which enemies on the sea will spot me, and I want that to be as low range as possible, because I want to avoid them, to not get my shit kicked in. I have a very good pages strat, which is from my background, which I did before the stream started. Um, you can like, do a bit of character creation at the start of a game. Uh, which is uh, the speed at which I convert fragments, which I gather from doing stuff like I am doing now, uh, playing out stories and little storylets, transferring that, or, or kind of, um, 
how does it converting that into secrets and secrets are actually a tradable commodity in this game which is worth money but the faster the higher my pages kill the faster actually I will um, the faster I will get my um, secrets from my fragments uh, even though the game looks interesting it's too much reading I hope that's only at the beginning uh, it is very much a, a text-based game but personally I'm a literature guy I like reading and I like kind of the, the interactive fiction stuff so that's kind of this is this is not a problem for me of course if you're not very much into reading you want a bit more action of course I'm, I'm kind of laying it out here so I'm going a bit more slowly as I would than I would be if I was playing all on my own um, but you'll have to make decisions and, and make choices in the game and the text is of course there to explain what might or might not happen if you choose one specific option so the text does serve a purpose it's maybe a bit more embellished a bit more um, going zigzaggy than, than just bare essentials but that's 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 nice it, it brings color and brings atmosphere I find uh, but like I said, it's constantly being added to. Uh, new stories are constantly still being added because the game is just in early alpha. Uh, mirrors is my ability to uh, find a firing solution in combat because when you go in combat with other ships, you have to kind of spend a while calibrating your shots and the more time you spend calibrating, the more chance you'll ha have at actually hitting them. And this is just my damage, my DPS. Well, not really DPS, but well, damage per shot, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and well, this determines how much damage I do, of course. Anyway, so we can once again explore the Morn, which will probably lead to an encounter. We could pay the loitering docker for it, for he is his strategic information, which will expend five echoes. And well, at fat five echoes is nothing. Admiralty sent you, price has gone up, it's not safe here. You'll pay the difference, won't you? Sure, I will. You're a general soul. I have your reward the other side of the river. One day. And there's a little reward for now. Here's a little reward for now. Good sailing to ye. It's a, it's a Z. It's not a C, it's a Z. So, uh, everything, a Z, it's a sailor and sailing and a, uh, a song of the Z. <laughs> The report is barely legible. Perhaps that's part of the code. The Admiralty will know. Now I have one time... Uh, I've Well, I have the strategic information, is what that says basically. I've completed my commission, but I've paid five echoes for it, which is no problem at all, because I will get about, I don't know, a hundred or so for this information back in fallen London. So the only thing I need to do now is actually... Um, get to fall in London. I might try to gather intelligence. Uh, if I fail at this I probably gain some terror. But I think that's okay. 31% chance, that's slightly less than 1 in 3? I'm gonna go for it. Boop. Scarecrow, Scarecrow, you're eavesdropping on the captain of a lean black cutter when our first mate spots you. Uh oh. In the ensuing fracas, one of your crew is smashed through a flimsy wooden wall. He falls 200 feet to be impaled on a smaller stalagmite in the shadow of the morn. So he goes like this. <laughs> Onto there. It's a painless death. Really? It, he's being skewered on a stalagmite. That's not really a painless death, really. But his slowly mummifying corpse will hang there for decades to come. Ah, excellent. <laughs> Ships will salute it. Successive generations of children will name it, rename it, fling stones, dare each other to climb the pinnacle and kiss its fleshless hand. So basically what we've just done is created history. We have rewritten the history books or added a little paragraph to them. But we have, of course, uh, yeah, lost one crew. <laughs> um... Looks like a great game, but it needs a slower tutorial phase. You need to make the choice after players of knowledge of the game. Yeah, it's it's kind of a, um, a a trial and error game, especially at the start. I've played it for a bit, as I said, so I've um, 
kind of, you know, been looking at it, and I've figured some stuff out, looked some stuff up. But uh, you do need to to spend a while trying to learn it because it's a, it's tough on you, especially at the start. It will ruthlessly uh, kick your ass, especially when you uh, sail around with the light on. You'll think about what I don't have any fuel to get anywhere. I'm, I'm spending it so fast. This is overpowered. But it's really about yeah, kind of fine tuning that. Um, that initial experience, or, or fine-tuning the your technique of sailing and finding islands and stuff. Of course, I'm, as I said, I'm largely helped by the fact that I preserved my chart from earlier games, so I can keep adding to it, and uh, I know where stuff is already, which is a very, very big help. <laughs> I love slow-paced games, like adventures and such, but usually this kind of information is presented through some kind of animation. Yeah, what's what's usually common in adventure games is that the main character will tell you stuff through dialogue, indeed. Or you'll see a little clip, or a little film, um, but usually you get told what's happened. Here, what's happening here, you have to read it. Uh, would I say that early access here is good enough and worth buying? Well, of course, it depends. It it depends on whether you like this sort of game, this style of well, rogue light where the environment is procedurally generated, so the islands switch position if you don't save the map. Um, it's permadeath, so if you die, you will die uh, and have to, ret have to start a new game all over. There is an option to turn that off if you want, but it's intended to, play with, to be played with permadeath. Uh, I'm going to explore the more while we're at it. And, um, like, yeah, go around adventuring it's discovering new stuff. It's a bit like um, Don't Starve or Darkwood, stuff like that, games like that. And for early access, um, as I said, I've played this for 13 hours and I've not seen the entire map. I've seen, I'll show you in a second, uh, I've seen half of it maybe, not even. And they're still adding uh, content to it a lot. But yeah, it looks like it looks like it's gonna be when it's finally finished. Of course, if you don't mind the reading you have to do, um, it looks like it's gonna be really awesome. Uh, if they just keep adding stories and stories and stories to make a very good um, end game, it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be great. Anyway, let's have a look at this.